All right, I'm gonna try another uh, viewer suggested video today. So thanks, Succeed, for the suggestion. Uh, so this is a digit DP. Uh, so uh, we want to count the number of numbers that have either six or eight, but not both, uh, between L and R, which are up to ten to the eighteen, um, and no leading zeros allowed. Uh, so obviously. You know, we can't just do brute force, right? We could do brute force up to maybe 10 to the 9, but 10 to the 18 is way too big. Uh, so, this is a good example of a, a digit DP. Uh, I'm not super familiar with this interface. I don't really use coding game, but I guess we'll try using their, uh, their IDE. Let's see how it goes. You can always copy to the, to the shell later if we want. Um, Okay, so we are going to use C++. We have a template that this was auto-generated. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so the first trick is that they ask between L and R, but we're going to write a function uh, that just takes a single limit, and then the answer is going to be f of R minus f of L minus 1. Right, so this is just the number of numbers uh, between 0 and n. And to get the numbers between L and R, you know, 0 to R minus the number of numbers from 0 to L minus 1. OK. Uh, so this is going to be dp, uh, I guess, n. And then the state is going to be what index uh, digit we're on. Actually, we probably want to convert n to a string, don't we? Uh, and we want uh, n not ten plus s, right? Because the It always fills uh, you know, n mod ten is the last digit, so that's why we're going in reverse. Uh, okay, so which index we're on? Oh, actually, it's getting easier to write out the function signature. Uh, this is whether or not we are less than our limit yet. That's maybe it. is not a number, but a string. That's the whole point of constructing this. It's very helpful to write down exactly what the DP is supposed to compute. Um, there are current less than s. We have a 6 yet. 
Actually, we are allowed to have leading zeros. They just don't appear in the number, right? Uh, that is like zero, zero, 006 is a lucky number. It's just six. You know, all our numbers are 18 digits. You know, in reality, when you're writing numbers, you don't write the leading zeros. So, okay, we don't need that. Uh, okay, so if i is s dot size, that means that we're done. So if we have six or eight, but not both, which is XOR, then we're good. You know, then that's a number, otherwise not. Uh, so to just go from zero up to let's just make this a vector. Characters. Uh, okay, so if we're already less, then we can go all the way up. You know, we can do anything from zero to nine. Otherwise, we are limiting ourselves to. You know, we can't go past the current character. Or we would do too big. Uh, plus one. So. We're less if we were already less, or a new number, do new digit is less than uh, the limit if that's this index. Uh, we have a six if we already had a six, or we added a six. We have an eight if we already had an eight, or we added an eight. Uh, and of course, we need to pass through s. That might be it, actually. Uh, yeah, I have one too many false here because we got better than not zero. Okay. You're gonna tell us what this test case is? Yeah, well. Okay, so now we need to actually do the DP. Um, so again, so, okay, so, uh, you know, for our DP table, a map would be more convenient, but a vector is going to be a lot faster, so we need to compress our state into something small. Luckily, this is easy for Booleans, because they only have two values. Uh, so this is the usual sort of compression trick uh, that I was explaining in the last video for tuples, right? That um, you just sort of think of these as uh, like a number. So you know, these there's two options for this, two options for this, two options for this. Uh, so we're going to stick these values basically in the lower three bits. And so we multiply it by eight to you know, reserve those three bits, and then we stick LT in the third bit, six in the second bit, and eight in the uh, first bit. Uh, so if DPT is greater than zero, return DPT and equal to zero. And again, we're exploiting the fact that all of the answers are uh, non-zero. Times eight plus negative one. All the answers are non-negative, rather. Uh, so we can use the negative number as a sentinel for not seen yet. Uh, sorry, this should be DP equals. some kind of overflow here? Shouldn't be. Ten to the eighteen. Actually is nineteen digits long. How about that? 
Right, one followed by 18 zeros. Okay, well that was nice of them to give us this test case. Uh, sure, so let's give it a try. Okay. I think that means we got it. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, yeah, so that was this problem. Um, and this is a pretty standard digit DP problem, right? You had the index in some state about the number so far, usually including uh, this like less than, which is, um, you know, whether or not sort of how, how have you been matched up the limit so far? So we're using the fact that once you pick a single number, right, you, you're filling in the digits from the most significant, right, the biggest, you know, the biggest place, the largest digit for the least. Uh, so once you put in any digit that's less, the whole number is going to be less. Right? If I put in a 1 and my limit starts with a 2, I can put in 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 from then on. Right? And it's still going to be less. Uh, so that's a nice sort of property that we, you know, very useful for these problems. And then uh, the rest of the state here is actually very simple, just whether or not you have 6 and 8 so far. Um, you know, it can get, definitely get more complicated than that. Uh, yeah, so our base case, um, you know, if we filled in the number, we need to check if that number is good or not. Uh, handling the DP, um, the state compression is not that bad here, just one bit for each bool. Uh, and then the actual DP transition, not too bad either. Uh, we just iterate over the next digit to put in, um, and the limit depends on whether or not, you know, as we said, if we're already smaller, we can go all the way up to nine, otherwise we can't go any bigger than what our limit has at the same position. Uh, and then we just need to uh, like update, you know, the state, right? So I plus one, uh, we're smaller if we're already smaller, or we get a smaller, new smaller digit, you know, we might get a six, you might get an eight, um, keep passing limit through, uh, and, you know, convert our numerical limit to a string limit so that it's easier to access, you know, a specific digit, or not a string, a vector, uh, you know, make sure the DP table is big enough, get the initial state, um, and, you know, this R minus L trick, so that we don't have to keep track of a separate lower bound, that would be a pain. So, yeah, that's this problem. Hope that was helpful.